It is the 25th week of the year and this is Capital Markets on the first weekend in the month of July. Good evening and welcome to the program. I'm Tempula Shaju. Now this year, the Nigerian equities market and a fixed income as well as the unlisted securities segment of Nigeria's financial system have seen an appreciable level of recovery compared to where they were this time last year. Now, the equities market, for example, has moved this year alone from an index level of 26,616.89 to 33,117.48 with the total market value, which is now the market capitalization, rising from 9.1 158 trillion naira on January the 3rd to 11.452 trillion naira on June the 30th. And that brings the year to date performance of the index to 23.23%. And of course, thanks to the central bank's investors and exporters window for foreign exchange, which returned foreign portfolio investors in the second quarter of the year to the capital markets. Now, the performance of the domestic bonds market in the first half of 2017 has also been lackluster in comparison to Treasury bills where uh, markets uh, have seen much uh, influence or, or sentiment in, in terms of equities. Now, despite the seemingly attractive yield environment, investors have consistently favored shorter tenured instruments, uh, TBUs and the open market operations, which the central bank has consistently carried out. And these are uh, trading at higher rates than the longer dated bonds um, instruments. Consequently, average yields across all the trading bond instruments increased from 16.4% at the short of the at the start of the year to 16.7%. Uh, at the end of the half year 2017, a lot of analysts believe that this trend will persist until uh, they, they begin to see a kind of interest rates uh, regime at the moment by the central bank, which is being controlled by the central bank, you know, amended. But on the program this evening, we'll be joined by an investment analyst to review the first half of the year for our program. Meantime, let's reflect on some of the market news that we saw this week, and we'll be taking a look at some of the companies, or one of the companies that actually visited the Nigerian stock exchange to close the markets. In commemoration of its 50th anniversary in West Africa, the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA as it is fondly called, is expressing its support for private companies in need of boost in their agribusiness sentiment. Now, the Deputy Director General for Partnerships and Delivery, Dr. Kentin Dashiu, said this while on a visit to the Nigerian Stock Exchange with a team from the Institute. Dr. Dashiu also explains why agriculture should no longer be seen as an extracurricular activity, but a business. Here today is because we see agriculture as a business. It should no longer be a family enterprise that is for survival. It should be and it is transforming into a business all across Nigeria. Now there's a lot of enthusiasm from private investors and we really are looking forward to helping them. IITA is a research organi organization that develops the technologies that can make agribusiness highly highly profitable. When farmers get 10 tons of cassava per hectare per year, that is guaranteed poverty. But when a business follows the right guidelines and gets 25, 35 tons of cassava per hectare, that is profitable business. And that's the same story for soybean, for maize, for yam, for beans, for plantain and banana. These are the crops we work on. So my message today is IITA is open and ready to partner with businesses all across Nigeria. We welcome them to our headquarters in Ibadan, to our offices in Kano, Abuja and One. So that's the team from the IITA headquartered in Ibadan. Let's go for our next story, which is a story from uh, Unilever. Nigerian Stock Exchange Consumer Goods Sector Company, Unilever Nigeria PLC, this week 
applied for the listing of its rights issue of over 1.961 billion ordinary shares of 50 kabo each to be listed at uh, 30 naira per share on the basis of 14 new ordinary shares for every 27 ordinary shares held. Overall, the proposed rights translates to a 58.8 billion naira increase in equity capital, given the additional cash of 40.3 billion naira conversion of foreign debt, which is put at 18.56 billion naira for that company. Time now to review the markets and the numbers, the way they crunched for this week. Let's begin with the little markets in the Nigerian capital market, and that's the NAS, the OTC, where the USI, the Unlisted Securities Index, came in at 631.52, having dropped by 3.50% this week, as the market capitalization closed at 427.37 billion naira. Now, volume decreased low, decreased by 11% compared to what we had last week at 249,270 units to 221,898 units. The value of the transaction in the market for this week came in lower at three, by 3%, and that's compared to uh, 30, the 30.69 million uh, shares that we saw last week, which is a decline of one um, million and eleven thousand units of shares lesser than last week. Last week's close uh, this week there were forty-seven deals, forty-three percent lower than what we had last week, which was eighty-three deals. And Friesland Wamco Nigeria uh, PLC, which also led the market this same time last week, incidentally, is about the same. Is the same company that led by volume and value for this week. And over to the fixed income market with focus on the, F, on the FMDQ OTC. FGM bonds there had a total uh, number of 105 deals yesterday, Friday, the 30th of June 2017, with total value coming in at 76.988 billion naira. And the price for the 18th of March 2036 uh, bond. Uh, you know, came in at 79 naira, 5 kobo, uh, but had 20 deals. Um, the longer tenor bonds of 22nd January 2026 and 27th January 2022 also had some sentiment from investors.